Good morning, guys. So today we are going to study a new topic called uh, X-ray systems. X-rays, as you might have already studied in the school level, it is a high frequency and a high energy electromagnetic radiation. The wavelengths of the electromagnetic radiation of this particular electromagnetic radiation will be ranging from 0.01 to 10 nanometers, and uh, its frequencies are from 3 into 10 to the power of 19 to 3 into 10 to the power of 16 hertz and uh, if you watch the spectrum carefully this reside between the ultraviolet radiation and gamma rays on the electromagnetic spectrum uh, since it's of a very energetic form of the electromagnetic radiation this can be used for taking images of the human body internal structures of the human body and as you see it has, as I told earlier, it has the ability to see through a person's skin. So that means it can it can be useful for picturing the internal organs of the of any person, and thus it can reveal the images of the bone underneath. Advances in the technology have led to more and more powerful and very focused X-ray beams over the years. X-rays are roughly classified into soft X-rays and hard X-rays. This is a, this will be the question number one. What are the types of X-rays? X-rays, as you might have studied in school itself, it was invented in 1895 by uh, Roentgen, a professor uh, from Germany. The main applications are so many. However, I have restricted it into only three. Uh, chest X-rays are extremely popular. This is used for detecting the abnormalities in uh, uh, any internal organs like lungs, heart and other abdominal organs. Even sometimes due to the uh, accidents, we can use this for finding the broken ribs also. And mammography is a special type of X-ray system where it can be used for finding any abnormalities in the breast tissue. And for the persons who are undergoing any uh, dental care, they can be using they will be using dental x-rays something uniquely designed for uh, uh, imaging only the only the tooths x-rays are produced due to the sudden deceleration of fast moving electrons when they try to collide and interact with uh, with an anode i hope you might have studied this in plus two itself in this process of deceleration more than 99% of the electron energy will be converted into heat and uh, less than 1% of the energy is converted into X-rays. An X-ray generator uh, gives power to the X-ray tube and it contains high voltage transformers, filament transformers and rectifier circuits. There will be a cathode as I mentioned um, just now. The cathode is a negative terminal of a X-ray tube. It is a tungsten filament. And when the current flows through it, the filament is heated and emits its surface electrons by process, uh, I think they call it as the thermionic emission, thermionic emission. A very high voltage, uh, maybe uh, in the range of 1000 volts, 1000 volts or else some kilowatts, uh, I think I think it is 1000 volts. It is applied between the cathode and anode. This causes the electrons to move towards the positive terminal of the tube at a velocity of the half of the velocity of the light now the positive terminal of the tube that is anode it's made up of tungsten as i have mentioned already these fast moving electrons interact with the anode in the following ways like it can interact with the k shell of the electron and uh, thus it produces uh, uh, i mean it causes the production of uh, something called the characteristic radiation and uh, it can interact with the nucleus and it can, uh, I mean, interaction with the nucleus can uh, form something called Bremsstrahlung radiation. Um, I think these two things are not necessary as far as exam is concerned, but still you should know this. And interaction with the outer shell electrons will cause a line spectrum. So totally, it causes three kinds of uh, radiation. One by interaction of uh, interaction with the K shell another one interaction with the nucleus another one interaction with the outer shell once after the x-ray has been produced as uh, shown in the diagram it will be passed through a collimator collimator is like a tiny aperture kind of thing which will uh, which will organize the x-rays to travel in a narrow path and uh, that collimator can be adjusted in such a way that 
uh, where I mean, I mean, it, I mean, this, this collimator can be adjusted in such a way that it can be positioned according to the need of the uh, need of the subject where the X-ray has to be pictured. And as you see in the diagram, the X-ray can penetrate through the body. And once after it just passes the human body, uh, in picture we call it as object, it falls on something called X-ray film. And once after it falls on the X-ray film, it will be impinging some important informations over the film, which we are going to check out very, I mean, immediately after this particular slide. And this film can be processed and finally the image can be displayed. So this is the overall view of any medical X-ray systems. The X-ray production system, just now I have explained in my previous slides, it's being uh, shown pictori I mean, actually pictorically. So as I said, electrons will be accelerated from cathode to anode. When high energy electrons hit atoms of the heavy metals, the atom produce X-rays. What can happen to the X-ray when it encounters the object to be imaged? For example, in our case, we are dealing with the medical objects. So what exactly happens when the X-ray passes through the object? Object means uh, our human body. It can, I mean, three things can happen. One is it can pass right through the object or else the second thing is it can be observed completely by the object and third thing is it can be scattered by the object. <laughs> this is a graphical representation of the attenuation, attenuation coefficient. Attenuation means what? It's a resisting power or blocking power. So this diagram is an attenuation coefficient drawn for a human body. Uh, three plots are there as you can see. Uh, the topmost part uh, has been obtained for a bone where you can clearly understand that the blocking power of the bone will be much higher when compared to other two uh, subjects that is muscle as well as fat. Fat has the lower attenuation constant as expected. So as mentioned in my previous slide, uh, the attenuation coefficient, it uh, totally depends upon the property of the material and this is what we are going to use it for our purpose that is imaging purpose because the attenuation constant of various objects that is present in the human body will be different and this is uh, going to play a huge role in forming the uh, x-ray image and uh, here density density means like uh, the bone has a high density compared to soft tissues hence the attenuation coefficient or else the blocking power of the bone will be higher when compared to the fats that we have seen just now just I have mentioned in my uh, second slide, I believe. So uh, that I mean, the detector has a special photographic film and is used to capture the X-ray photons which passes through the human body. The film then can be replaced. Um, I mean, then can be image processed by advanced softwares, and uh, this is processing will turn the film dark where it was exposed to the x-ray protons and in the previous slide we have come to know that uh, the uh, the x-ray passes differently i mean the passing capability of the x-rays will be different for various types of organs that means bone will be blocking more and uh, fat will be allowing more something like that some examples of the x-ray images i have shown so the first image is uh, x-ray image of the hand um, maybe if there is a crack we can find and the second one is the dental x-ray and third one is the mammogram. The main advantage of x-rays are it is widely available everywhere and it is pretty cheap when compared to other uh, imaging systems like uh, MRI, CT etc. And it's a simple system to maintain and uh, there are so many plenty of uh, trained persons are available on this particular area. So hence the expertise I mean, the cost of the expertise will be really cheaper. However, uh, using X-ray for uh, imaging purposes has to be done very carefully and it has a lot of uh, problems, uh, namely the exposure to the harmful radiation. There, there, there won't be much a contrast between the different uh, soft tissues. Uh, human beings have a lot of varieties in the soft tissues itself and this X-ray does not have the capability to verify both. And uh, image is nothing but a shadowgram or projection image. So that means the depth information will be lost. 
So let me recall, uh, recall what are the things that we have studied. Uh, we have studied uh, the, 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 the mechanism, how the X-rays will be produced. And we have studied how the X-rays can be useful in detecting the abnormality of the any human beings because we have just now checked that the absorption capability or else the attenuation capability will be different from uh, body parts to another body part and this is going to play a huge role in forming the image later on on the uh, x-ray setup so what happens is when the x-ray machine has been turned on the x-rays travel uh, and it will be finely passed through the collimator and it just uh, falls over the body where exactly we need to uh, uh, we need to capture the x-ray image and as I have mentioned earlier since the absorption coefficient of the different tissues will be different and uh, the x-rays somewhere it will be absorbed and some other places it will be just passed and it depends upon the tissue which is underlying it can I mean it can pass through very it can pass through very easily in a, a fatty substance as well as a tissue substance as well as it will be blocked by a bone these things we have already seen and thus this uh, outcoming or this this x-rays which comes out of the body will be passed in a x-ray image and this x-ray image will be processed further to produce the uh, x-ray image to, to produce the final x-ray image where the doctors can be uh, seen analyzing the breakage or any cracks etc and thus x-rays play a huge role in medical systems medical analysis it's nothing but this computed uh, tomography it's nothing but a modified version of the x-rays the computerized uh, x-ray uh, i mean in short i can call it as computerized x-ray it is a procedure in which a narrow beam of x-rays is aimed at a patient and quickly rotated around the body as you can see from the picture there is a gantry that round the circle thing uh, that thing is nothing but a gantry and the patient will be inserted uh, inside that gantry and the gantry is uh, i mean gantry has the provision of rotatability so the patient while he is lying inside the gantry the gantry will be rotated around the body and thereby the x-rays will be passed uh, as a narrow beam exactly pinpointedly at a place of the patient where the image has to be taken so as you can see since these x-ray images sorry since these x-rays passes uh, across the body it is going to provide me a cross section of the image that means when a, when a, when a, when a uh, x-ray just passes through my body it i mean that x-ray will make a slice and wherever it travels through the body it will capture an image according to the principle which i have explained in my previous class so very sure uh, ct is going to provide me series of slices that means it can produce lot of slices depending upon the angle of the gantry as i have mentioned earlier the gantry has the rotatability option so every single angle every single angle the x-rays will be passed throughout through the uh, section of the body of the patient where it has to be captured so once the imaging procedure is over the all the as you can see there are two computers there right so we call it as monitors so these computers will be having stacked number of images means successive slices so lot of stack of images will be available in the uh, actually computer for processing so there will be an uh, back uh, actually there will be an algorithm there is an algorithm inside the computer which will process all the collected images and form a three dimensional image of the patient now the three dimensional image which has been formed from the series of stacked images in the computer will give us more information when compared to the normal x-rays so just like i have mentioned in my previous slide ct this computer tomography is also used for this diagnostic purpose just like our x-rays but it has more versatility when compared to the x-rays x-rays uh, is very limited in nature 
and a CT has a capability of producing three dimensional images. So, uh, the doctor can understand the size, shape, structure of the underlying object which they are emphasizing. So, this means they can clearly understand what they are dealing with. Uh, unlike x-rays where they will be having a two dimensional image where the doctors may not have a uh, enough amount of knowledge because say for example a, a guy who is suffering from cancer or something like that so inside the lesion uh, not only the presence or the location of the lessons will give you some information but also the shape size uh, everything that will give you some added information in the CT so which may be not uh, which is not available in the x-ray imaging type this particular slide I have explained to you already in a normal x-ray, we will be having a fixed x-ray tube. Uh, that means the, there won't be any gantry at all. But a CT scanner uses a motorized x-ray source that rotates around the circular opening of the uh, gantry. Right? During this particular scanning process, as I have mentioned earlier, the patient lies on the blood bed and the gantry will move around and the x-ray tube simultaneously move or rotates around the patient and passes the narrow beams of x-rays through the throughout the body so we so that is the reason we get a lot of lot i told you in the previous slide we get stacked number of images for a single point from various angles and uh, this cross-sectional images we call it as tomography and this is uh, this will give us lot of information when compared to a single image so every uh, for every single rotation the gantry completes uh, we will be having lot of images and we will be having mathematical algorithms that can construct a three dimensional image from the series of sliced images so this is what I was trying to say right from the slide one as you could have imagined uh, I mean the CT scanner system should have x-ray tubes and it should have a collimator because I have explained the purpose of collimator in my previous video and it should have a detector system because once the x-ray passes the body it is going to uh, actually it, it, it is not going to stay there itself it is going to pass through and uh, depending upon the thickness as well as uh, the nature of the body under study it is going to uh, either refract or else it is going to pass through it uh, basically depends upon the thickness of the tissue and these things we have already studied in our previous class this is the tissue attenuation characteristics I told you in my previous slide that uh, uh, the the imaging ranges between black to white right so black to white uh, and uh, the ranging of the color from black to white it always depends upon the tissue character just I have mentioned this characteristics have been modeled and have been given as a mathematical formula and that has been described here here you can see the it's an exponential equation and we have the thickness of the tissue as an exponent so you can imagine what happens when the thickness increases and uh, what happens when the thickness decreases vice versa CT scanning is one of the most accurate device that is available and most advantages when compared to the old x-ray system and it's a painless and non-invasive technique this means a doctor may not do a, a surgery to study the underlying uh, tissues of the patient MRI it's also called as nuclear magnetic resonance imaging it's a kind of a scanning technique as you might have heard from your parents or also from your relatives it's a scanning technique for creating a detailed image of the human body this scan uses a very strong magnetic field and uh, the use of the radio waves as well to generate the images of the parts of the body and uh, the reason why we go for MRI is it's very safe when compared to x-rays and also it provides uh, the very detailed images of the body that cannot be seen in x-rays as well as CT scans hence the doctors suggest uh, us to go for MRI when we pick uh, some sports injuries or else when the doctors need to study the brain uh, related uh, studies so in case if the doctor need, needs more detailed 
information more details in case if they require more details they often suggest for MRI so as you can see this contains a huge gantry just like in the case of the CT machine and uh, there will be a patient table where the patient will be made to lie and the patient has to be sta in standstill condition uh, over the period of time and there is a scanner scanner means there will be some detectors and uh, there's a very powerful magnet uh, the, the details of the magnet will be um, uh, will be discussed in the next slide and there is a radio frequency coil as well as there is something called gradient coils as you know the human body is mostly made up of water and uh, water molecules certainly contains hydrogen molecules that is nothing but protons now this proton has a capability of getting aligned with a strong powerful magnetic field so it's very obvious the MRI scanner when they use a very powerful magnet something around the three Teslas uh, three Teslas means it's uh, equal to several thousand times of the strength of the uh, typical ma uh, typical magnet that has been used in the fridge so what happens is the proton which is present in the human body will it will will spin itself from its axis the scanner also produces a radio frequency current that creates a varying magnetic field so what will happen one side the ma powerful magnetic field it uh, spins the proton and the next side we are uh, providing a uh, by using a radio frequency current we are providing a varying magnetic field so what generally happens is the protons which is now in a misaligned condition absorbs the energy from the magnetic field and uh, flip their spins and uh, suddenly when you switch off the magnetic field the protons which is now in a uh, super I mean actually when, uh, the, when the, the protons which is now in a amplified condition gradually try to return to their normal position this particular process we call it as precision and this while they return back to the normal position or also normal spin this produces a radio signal and this radio signal can be picked by some radio coils or else RF frequency coils and this will be received by uh, I mean sorry actually this will be this can be converted by using some back projection techniques and it can be converted into some images where we get the details of the internal structure of the body so this picture shows you a pictorial diagram a pictorial, a pictorial representation of a human undergoing the MRI scanning as you see we have very powerful magnet and it has been passed over the body of the patient and the protons which is present in the human body gets aligned and uh, since we have a RF coil that produce that has the capability of producing a varying magnetic for, uh, field the protons spin and gets elevated to a higher higher condition and uh, when you suddenly switch off the magnetization effect also with the varying magnetic field which we are pro which we were uh, giving uh, initially when we suddenly switch it off uh, these protons which are in elevated condition that means the higher um, state of uh, the energy returns back to the lower or else initial or else its original state of spin while it returns back it emits some kind of radio frequency waves this is normal as per the anatomy I mean uh, actual physics is our concern so while it returns back it emits some kind of RF uh, signal and this RF signal contains the information about the tissue which is underlying or else which is being under scanner right so this contains the information now this signal while it returns back will be will be collected uh, by the RF frequency separate RF frequency coil uh, as it has been uh, shown in the uh, slide that is a blue color coil is there right so that one will pick the sig RF signal of the 
that has been emanated from the cell endoscopy endoscopy is generally used for studying any digestive diseases and it helps the surgeon immensely to have a look around inside the body without opening it it's a non surgical procedure and especially it is uh, if it i mean most probably it will be having a flexible tube with a light as well as camera attached to the tip of it so that the doctor can view pictures of our digestive tract on a monitor generally the endoscopy can be easily passed through the mouth and it goes through the throat and the esophagus and thereby the doctor can reach the stomach without opening the stomach without opening the muscles and even endoscopy can be passed into the large intestine we call it as colon uh, through rectum also that is also possible this kind of uh, floros i mean this kind of endoscopy we call it as sigmoidoscopy or colonoscopy because uh, this is uh, this particular procedure is for studying colon that is present in the large intestine and hence it is called colonoscopy so in exam they can ask you like that also uh, i mean in case if the question I mean, they want to test you in the question they can ask you to write a short notes on uh, this colonoscopy even the name itself will suggest you endoscopy if you search in dictionary it uh, means that uh, mm, looking inside so typically it says that it's a technique that is used for uh referring inside for some medical reasons uh, most probably the medical reasons will be related to the digestive tract system and uh, as i mentioned earlier it's an it's an instrument with a hollow organ or else a cavity uh, inside the body where we will be using the camera and other uh, minute devices that can be useful for uh, imaging as well as the transferring the data from the um stomach to the monitor where the uh, where the doctors can have an access in earlier days they used to have the rigid type of system it could be painful and uh, later on they invented a flexible tube system that is the endoscopy i mean the camera the uh, i mean the data transfer path everything will be embedded in the tube actually and this particular tube can be inserted either through rectum or else through uh, the throat and uh, these two inventions immensely helped the doctors to have a look around inside the digestive system without opening it mostly it will be having a lens system that will be embedded at the tip of the tube and there will be a eyepiece or else we call it as video screen and also an additional tube or additional cavity will be present in that this we have to understand the reason of for the additional channel is to uh, uh, insert a, a, any medical instruments uh, that can cut or pull or uh, uh, do any kind of uh, manipulations inside the body without the need for opening the body so two things they achieve directly they get the video from the uh, video from the video screen uh, or else we can call it as ips and second thing is it facilitates a way uh, say for example in case i mean in 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 your in, in this particular analysis if the doctor finds a problem inside the digestive system and uh, there will be an another channel where you can insert some instruments to treat the particular location so no need for an i mean for for a opening or something like that so here itself the channel will be provided that's the meaning there so this is the early earlier uh, uh, stage of invention of the endoscope as you can see there is a long rigid tube and uh, this particular tube can be inserted through the rectum and they will be having an access uh, to the particular digestive system uh, without opening our body and as uh, i mean it's obvious that this will be extremely painful the patient will be generally given uh, mild anesthesia or mild sedation and the surgeons will uh, guide a small or else this particular flexible tube that is uh, a big improvement in the
previous stage that is uh, previously they were using a rigid uh, thing and that that can cause immense uh, pain to the particular patient now they have introduced a flexible tube and uh, this flexible tube has a light as well as a camera on the tip and uh, it can move flexibly through the throat uh, till the area of the concern and the and uh, the particular doctor will be having the entire control to rotate the camera and have a look around and uh, to make a complete study in his hand and this particular thing is shown in the figure you can you have the uh, i mean so many balls deflection uh, i mean actually deflection knob is there uh, so that you can rotate the camera all around 360 degrees and uh, so in short i can say like the tip of the camera i mean the camera which is present at the tip of the tube can be controlled at the uh, at the starting point of the particular tube which will be included in a handheld device and that will be operated by the doctor the other end of the particular tube will be connected to a uh, video capturing system we call it as video scope here we have a processor that has the ability to convert the electrical signals that has been converted from the colon or else uh, uh, any digestive tract part into video signals and uh, this video signals will be processed and the noise removed and will be finally displayed on the monitor and as i mentioned earlier there will be a light source uh, which will be provided the tip of the tube which has been inserted into the human body and this light source generally they use xenon lamp as i mentioned earlier this flexible tube also contains one more uh, uh, channel where you can in, where the doctor can insert uh, any possible i mean any possible instruments uh, through the tube for the for uh, uh, treating uh, the location later on in the 90s uh, a biggest invention or biggest breakthrough happened in the endoscopy uh, 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 treatment procedures that is uh, they invented a small miniature device that can be inserted just like a pill and we call it as capsule endoscopy this changed the entire scenario this changed the entire way how the patients got treated before then it was uh, I mean, it's a slightly cumbersome as well as a painful procedure after that it became completely non-invasive and completely painless and completely disposable procedure and the patient can breathe free they used to have a very powerful camera or lens at the tip of the capsule which has the ability to take 50,000 to 60,000 digital images uh, per 8 hour the entire size of the particular capsule will be just like a small pill um, roughly i mean uh, range i mean roughly the dimension will be 26 cross 11 millimeter so here we have a data recorder and a transmitter that has the ability to record the data as well as to transmit the data to the uh, wi-fi wi-fi connected wi-fi enabled or wi-fi connected a distant computer and this data will be streamed live to the particular computer and there we have there will be having some uh, specialized software that has the ability to uh, manipulate as well as uh, noise remove or in fact process the uh, data collected and finally to interpret it so that the doctor can easily understand what's uh, underlying and uh, the light source here will be in the form of light emitting diodes that is LED there will be several uh, tiny light uh, so tiny dot like uh, uh, LEDs um, it, I mean actually semiconductor there will be a transmitter as well as antenna as I have mentioned earlier the entire process takes around the six to eight hours to uh, in order to make a proper study in this picture this is a sample picture of uh, the day I mean the image which has been collected uh, using the endoscopy left side you can see now uh, the the image is showing a bone being stuck at the throat bone sometimes we when we eat meat so there is a fair chance that the bone or uh, um, any kind of thorn that can impose or else impairs uh, into the flesh area of the throat and uh, that will cause extreme discomfort for the patient 
and uh, in the right side uh, we, we see a snapshot of uh, the rigid uh, endoscopy where uh, we 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 impose a, we we impose a uh, special instrument that will assess to the particular area through the uh, rigid endoscopy tube, and finally it will be useful for uh, plucking out the particular bone or thorn at the accidental I mean accident cost area. The next uh, important topic which we are going to discuss is the fluoroscopy. It's a modified version of the X-ray machines basically. X-ray machine has a biggest limitation that is it can produce only one image at a time. And uh, the, the, so that means the variation of the particular organ or else the change of the particular organ with respect to time may not be accessible. And that is going to give us a crucial inform that is going to give us the crucial informations uh, about the particular organ underlying. So in short, I can call fluoroscopy as a medical imaging technique that has the ability to show the continuous X-ray images on a monitor. So it's uh, just like an X-ray movie. We can call it as X-ray movie. So here the procedure is the X-ray beam will be passed through the body and the image is transmitted to the monitor so that the and you, 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 you know how it functions, right? Like X-ray beams when passed to the body body it uh, depending upon the attenuation level of the particular organ some of the x-rays will be absorbed and some other will be refracted some other will be reflected these things already we have discussed in the x-ray class itself uh, in the monitor the image will be transmitted and uh, monitored as well so that the movement of the body part especially the particular organ can be easily understood by uh, having a uh, a dye mechanism we call it as x-ray dye so that the change of the particular organ with respect to time can be clearly observable and of course this particular procedure has its own disadvantage because we are using x-rays so very sure that the radiation can cause some problem with the patient so we got to be very careful about the dose of the um, past uh, radiations the image shows the pictorial representation of a fluoroscopy technique where we have a uh, we can you can see that there is a video monitor as well as uh, you know, the entire x-ray system has been remodified uh, just to cap I mean, just to capture the serious amount of the images uh, same x-ray machines only we have image intensifier tube just like that and uh, we have a spot film cassette where the x-ray films can be inserted and uh, we'll be having a collimeter just uh, just to uh, pinpointedly uh, uh, pass the x-rays so the entire x-ray system will be present here but of course with a modification just to produce a series of images imaging which works with the principle called a sonography it involves exposing the part of our body structure uh, to a high frequency sound waves where we need to produce the pictures especially we use this technique to uh, to capture the pictures of the inside structure of the body and uh, the biggest advantage is it is not as harmful as our x-rays where we use the ionizing radiation it just uses the sound waves because ultrasound images are captured in real time they can actually show the structure of the internal organ and uh, even the movement of the body organs live so this is a probably a biggest advantage uh, when say for example when we are studying the movement of the baby growth of the baby activities of the baby uh, inside the mother's womb ultrasound will be exclusively used because it is a harmless because uh, uh, the child or else the kid cannot be exposed to a powerful radiation like x-rays so ultrasound plays a major role in this kind of applications as I pointed out earlier, this uses the sound waves and uh, they, we call it as a sonar technique actually in the which was uh, which is being used in this submarines for so many years and uh, this is what happens. The crystal or else the ultrasound machine which has some crystal powerful crystals transmits high frequency pulses somewhere around ranging between 1 to 5 megahertz into our body. Uh, using a probe the probes tip will be having the ultrasound crystal these sound waves 
travel into your body and hit a boundary between the tissues that is between the fluid soft tissue soft tissue and the bone so the boundaries means what that is a separation between the fluid as well as soft tissue or else the soft tissue and the bone because the body consumes these th these things only so some of the sound waves which travels inside the body gets reflected back to the probe itself the probe will be having a separate crystal for collecting the uh, reflected back or else a reflected sound waves so while some travel on further until they reach another boundary but anyhow that will also eventually be, will be reflected back and that will be collected by the ultrasound crystals while it returns back it collects the crucial information about the internal organs their shape their structure their boundaries everything and this can give an in-depth idea for the doctors who is doing the study as i mentioned in my previous slide the reflected waves will have some crucial information about the body structure or else the internal organs so these reflected waves will be picked by a probe and will be given to a computer the computer will calculate the distance from the probe to the tissue or else any organ in between using the speed of the sound in the tissue at the same time the the time of the each return of the echo will also be calculated once after the calculation is over uh, the machine will display the distances and the intensities of the echoes on the screen in form of a two dimensional image so uh, the screen you can see a sample ultrasound image of a baby inside the womb of the mother a basic ultrasound machine generally will have these following parts uh, one transducer probe that uh, where the transducer I mean where the ultrasound crystals will be placed at the tip of the probe and the probe has the capability of sending as well as receiving the ultrasound waves and in, in conjunction with that we'll be having a, a machine that can calculate all the all the necessary calculations and we call it a CPU and uh, the transducer um, sends the signal vice versa to this CPU and uh, we have a transducer pulse control that has the capability of changing the amplitude frequency and duration of the each pulses that has been emanated from the transducer probe and, and also uh, the collected information has to be processed in the CPU and has to be displayed in the uh, display or else a monitor where the where the uh, the physicians can uh, interact with the monitor so that they can understand and study the underlying object and uh, we have a disk storage space where we can save the data all those things and all and it can I mean there will be provision for this i mean there will be provision for printing the image as well so there are different types of modes that are available options that are available in the ultrasound machine uh, namely a mode b mode or C mode, M mode, as well as a Doppler mode. Doppler mode. A mode is a very simple type of the ultrasound. A mode is also called as amplitude modulation. It um, just displays the amplitude or amplitude spikes of different heights actually, only the heights. So basically, we will be having a one dimension plot in the monitor. So only the the height i mean the height of the pulse uh, shows what what is the information that you get the height of the pulse will tell you what i mean what's the width of, or also what's the um, thickness of the object that is being under study so this height will correlate with the width of the particular organ or else particular tissue it is used especially in ophthalmology study a mode consists of a x axis as well as y axis where the x axis represents the depth that means the thickness of the particular object and y axis represents the amplitude so as i mentioned a mode is a one dimensional thing and it may not give you a lot of informations related to the object under study so they moved on to the 
B mode. B mode is also called as brightness modulation. Uh, bright, I mean, B mode is something but brightness modulation. It's a two-dimensional map of B mode data and is the most common form of the ultrasound imaging. So, unlike our A mode, B mode is based on brightness with the absence of the vertical spikes. This is the biggest difference. So, what happens? The brightness depends upon the amplitude or else the intensity of the echo. So, there, so, so it means there is no Y axis on the B mode. Instead, there will be one more axis called Z axis. Now, this Z axis will represent the echo, intensity, echo intensity or amplitude. And the, uh, and the X axis will also be there, which represents the depth. So, this is the difference between the A mode as well as B mode. So, B mode will display only dots actually. Previously, we were seeing some uh, graph kind of thing, one dimensional thing. But here, we will be having large as well as small dots. The, this dots, dots means manasala uh, uh, dot, dot. So, this dots will represent strong or weak echoes. A weak echo will be a small dot uh, and a large dot will represent as a thick organ. So, below, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, we have a, another mode called C mode. C mode is formed in a plane normal to a B mode. So, there will be a gate that selects the data from a specific depth from an A mode line. Then, the transducer is moved in the 2D plane to the sample the entire region at its fixed depth. So, what happens? The transducer traverses the area in a spiral, an area of 100 cm square and it can be scanned around 10 seconds. Look, uh, you can go through YouTube and check out the differences. Otherwise, it may be, I mean, uh, in our video conferencing, it, it will be hard for you to understand the difference between B mode as well as C mode, especially. So, I request you to go to YouTube and check out the difference, the fundamental difference between C mode as well as B mode. A mode you can understand, B mode also you can easily understand. C mode, it's a bit tricky actually, you have to go and feel it. So, I request you to go and feel it, right. So, and one more mode is there, that is called motion mode. This motion mode is also called as this time motion mode. We call it as TM mode. And uh, it's a display of a one dimensional image that is used for analyzing moving, uh, moving body parts. Commonly, uh, we call it as cardiac uh, imaging, fetal cardiac imaging. Everything can be achieved. So, what they are doing? They are recording the amplitude as well as the rate of the motion in real time by repeatedly measuring the distance of the object from the single transducer. So, that is the difference. The single mode, single sound beam is transmitted and reflected echoes will be displayed as dots of varying intensities and uh, what it will happen? It will create lot of lines across the screen. So, this is the difference between M mode as well as other mode. And the Doppler mode uh, you must have studied this Doppler effect, right? So, this uses the Doppler effect for uh, creating the imaging, imaging. The next thing what we are going to study is the radiation therapy. And uh, the, the most important thing about the radiation therapy is, it can be used for treatment, especially for the curing the cancer hit patients. So, it has, it generates very powerful as well as intense beam or else a light or else a, some kind of energy uh, that will be passed pinpointedly over the spot of the place where the patient gets infected by the cancerous cells. So, radiation therapy as you can imagine, it mostly uses x-rays. So, it is very powerful, it contains, a, I mean, a, a very high energized protons actually. And this will be this will be passed over a particular spot where the uh, cancer cells are being found. Even before this happens, we should understand where exactly the location of the cancerous tissue is present. And uh, also, one more thing is we should know whether the particular uh, cell is infected by cancer or not. That is also there. So generally, the uh, the uh, radiotherapist they suggest you to go to a doctor, do a 
lab test where they will be checking the presence of the cancer cells in your body and once they exactly locate the position they will mark it out uh, they, ma they will mark it out using uh, some chalk or something not chalk some kind of color and um, this particular patient who has been marked now will go through the radiation chamber where they will be will be passing the high energy uh, x-ray beams to to exactly at the particular point where it has been marked to kill the cancerous cells so as i mentioned in my uh, previous slide it uses uh, generally it uses huge amount of energy in the form of either light or heat and most proper, mostly they use x-rays for the for the purpose uh, because uh, x-rays can really kill the cells so when the light or else the uh, the radiation passes over the infected area it simply breaks the structure of the dna of the cancer cells thereby it disrupts their growth and uh, finally it can kill them even kill them okay so other than x-rays sometimes they use gamma rays as well as electron beams also or else even protons also high intensity protons also anyhow the idea is to kill the damaged cancer cells generally uh, doctors prefer chemotherapy for uh, uh, for killing the cancer cells but that has its own side effects when the when the chemotherapy is not under your control they suggest you to take up the radiation therapy and it is a local treatment because you will be passing the therapy or else the radiation only to the particular area of uh, particular infected area